Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. How's everybody doing? It is uh, always good when you guys are with us. We are live, coming to you live from the East Coast of the United States. Yeah, we're here in the New York area, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut area, along the uh, beautiful Southern New England coast between New York and Boston. And it's great when you are with us from wherever you're watching around the world. I know you guys always tell us where you're watching from. If you want to do that tonight, today, feel free to do that. You can post it in the comments on our YouTube channel. Or if you'd like, if you want to chat live with us, you actually can for those that are watching live. And we thank you very much for being with us here live. It's uh, going to be a great night of entertainment as we have uh, acclaimed composer, musician, producer, drummer extraordinaire, Buddy Gibbons joining us live from Los Angeles, California. We're looking forward to that uh, prolific uh, composer for music and television and film and so much more. Uh, lots of songs and music and material uh, underscoring and everything else that you've heard, I'm sure. But uh, we're going to talk about all that in his prolific career. But uh, we welcome you and you and you and you, our Lovety audience. That's right. We say hello to the JMS Lovety Squad. They are our faithful audience. They're here all the time through thick and thin. It doesn't matter whether they have a tornado coming through their town or whatever it is. Somehow they find a way <laughs> to always be here. And we love that. We love all of you. Thanks for being with us, JMS Lovety Squad. And anybody that is watching for the very first time, hey, we welcome you. This is an entertainment lifestyle variety talk show series that we started, as we say each episode, uh, about almost 650 episodes ago. We're coming up on our two-year mark uh, towards the end of April, which is absolutely amazing. So thank you, thank you, thank you for everybody who's been with us since day one or new folks who've joined us maybe in the last few months or somebody who's maybe watching for the very first time. So cool, so wonderful, so fantastic to have you here. Now, while you're here, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That channel is Jim Masters TV. That's what houses all of the episodes, over 650 episodes, or at least close to that. I think we're inching close to 650. If we're right there, we'll have to do something extra special for you guys when we hit the 650. And something special when we hit the two years, which is coming up in uh, just a matter of a few weeks at the time of this show, which is live right now. Subscribe to the YouTube channel so that way there, you guys can also comment in chat. What does that mean? That means we have live chat happening right now. Our viewers are commenting and saying hello to one another, like they're part of our community. They're part of our JMS Lovety family. They're exclusively here with us. They're already saying hello to us, to our guest, to each other. So if you want to be a part of that action when our shows are live, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel because that's a gift for our subscribers. There's no cost to subscribe, but it's a gift to the subscribers. So just hit that red button, subscribe, click the notification bell so you get the uh, updates on all of our episodes. And you can comment right now live. We see your comments. Our guest does as well. Each other, you see it. Sometimes we show them on the screen here and there. Don't forget the super chat, super emoji, super stickers. If you love our episodes live when the shows are on in chat, you can uh, do that. That helps support our show as well. And then also later on, there's a little heart icon on our YouTube channel under every episode. If you click that, that's called thanks. And that's basically thanking us for all the work that goes on behind the scenes to put this uh, incredible Entertainment Lifestyle Variety Talk Show series together day in and day out for all of you. So good to see everybody here. Thanks for all the comments. We have a bevy of comments already built up from our lovely squad, as well as new folks joining us. So great to have you guys here. It was a busy day for me. Um, I was in the television studio all day. We had a, a guest fly in from, actually, they didn't fly. She drove up from Virginia. That's about a six hour, six and a half hour drive. And uh, she's a rocket scientist. Yes. And really, really cool. And she did a marathon. She's a life coach too. And she did a marathon on seven continents really incredible she's an author and that's for some of my professional work with close-up television out of new york and we were busy in the studio hosting producing doing all of that today and uh, then had some uh, lunch and here we are with all of you and we absolutely love it buddy gibbons is joining us live and direct from los angeles yes he's in his studio as well and we're really excited to have him here i want to tell you a little bit about his 
incredible background, starting from his earliest childhood memories of drumming on all kinds of household items to evolving into one of the most highly respected drummers, producers, composers in nearly every music publishing medium. Buddy Gibbons really continues to build his reputation with new projects that include global television productions, motion pictures, advertising, session work, live performances, and more. And while he may not be a household name because he is the invisible rock star, and we'll talk about what that means in a second, rest assured you've heard his work if you watch television. Now, you guys know I work in television, so I was really extra excited to have uh, Buddy join us. With nearly 200,000 placements on network television, Buddy is a highly respected and sought-after musician in the entertainment hub in Los Angeles, California. Buddy's work has garnered him endorsement deals with a variety of musical instrument, professional audio, and consumer products, manufacturers, and his social media presence appears on nextbigsound.com as a viral content provider as well. He's not uh, just the drummer's drummer. He offers a full scope of his abilities on stage in the studio and as a clinician. Buddy's uh, work has really provided incredible music for networks such as CBS, NBC, Fox Sports, Animal Planet, Hulu, and Netflix, and more. He was also commissioned by the Los Angeles Dodgers to create the team theme song, and we're going to play that for you too as well as the studio intro music for all Dodgers home games for television broadcasts, web presence, and so much more. He's also done work for the College Football Hall of Fame, Major League Baseball, NFL, 20th Century Fox, Comcast Sportsnet, ESPN, uh, the Chelsea Handler Show, Tanked, and so much more. Yeah, we're really excited. Some of his clients are the Dallas Cowboys, 20th Century Fox, Univision, MLB, as I mentioned, CBS Sports, and uh, Comcast Sportsnet, Animal Planet, Netflix, you name it. He uh, loves what he does, kind of like I do, and uh, that's always the best, isn't it? We are really excited to welcome him live and direct again. He's in his studio. Buddy Gibbons is joining us now again. If you guys want to comment during the show, gang, do it by uh, subscribing to the YouTube channel, and uh, you'll be in. And again, click the notification bell as well so you never missed any of our incredible episodes. Let's welcome Buddy Gibbons as our special guest right now on the Gym Masters Show Live from LA. Buddy, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Jim. I appreciate it. Great to be here. It's awesome. So you're in your studio there. You look like you're at home. You're comfortable. <laughs> you're in your Zen spot, right? It's very, very true. I am. Yes. <laughs> this so, is where it, where it all happens for me. This is where it all happens. Mm -hmm. So how have you been? I mean, uh, I just talked about some of the cool things that you do, and we'll, we'll check into that in just a second. But, uh, you know, we've just gotten through a crazy pandemic situation where right. the whole world stopped. Music stopped, stage, restaurants, television, film production stopped. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's all coming back, which is really, really cool. Right. But uh, how have you been sort of staying collaborative, connected, creative, and sane through it all <laughs> <laughs> the, the sanity question is the real question it, isn't is it? the one people say they're still working on <laughs> yeah. i'll get back to you on that <laughs> yeah no kidding uh you know the truth is the first year of the pandemic things just ground to a halt yeah there really wasn't much going on i, I didn't have much work coming in uh, like you said all the production stopped so with, yes. with everybody stopping making content uh, I didn't have any place to to do anything for any music. There was no no call for it. Uh, the good news for me was that I have a pretty extensive library. So a lot of the same uh, networks that use my stuff in the past just pulled from the library, and that, that helped me get through it. That's fantastic. Yeah. So you've been able to do that, and and your stuff is uh, you know you're prolific. Your stuff is really everywhere. How did you first yeah. get started? What what first inspired you to want to? get into music and were the drums the instrument of choice early on for you as a kid as you were banging on the pots and pans and your mother's kitchen and everywhere else <laughs> you know it's funny because um my sister who happens to be visiting from alabama she's here in la with me this weekend um she was a majorette in in the marching band in the high school when i because and she's a bit older than i am i came along as a bit of a surprise later um, and so, uh, yeah, so she would be in the high school band and I was in elementary school and I remember going to her football games mm -hmm. and I would be sitting on the, on the bleachers pounding along with the drums. Mm -hmm. And my mom would look down at me and, and one day I recall her saying, I don't think you're going to be a football player. I think you're going to be a drummer. That was the first moment of it. And I was probably six or seven years old at the wow. time. 
And then, you know, you fast forward a few years and I got involved in school band and that was really where everything began for me. So did your parents have a lot of music on in the house? Was it was, was it a house filled with music? So you were hearing a lot of sounds. How did that work for you? Yeah, it's really interesting, Jim, because um, I'm really something of an outlier in my family. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I, there really wasn't a ton of music. Um, when I was small, my, my father died when I was young and yeah. he was the musician in the he family. He was the musician. Yeah. yeah. So he introduced me to quite a few things, uh, including, and in particular, the Star Wars soundtrack. I've been doing my research and you are a real Star Wars guy, huh? I am. I'm a total nerd. I, my, wife calls, yeah. my wife calls me a pretty boy geek and she's hey. absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I think honestly that, that, um, that's where my love of star Wars came from, honestly, was just listening to the soundtrack as a, as a small child. And this was back in the days of the gigantic console stereos that that people had. Oh yes. Remember they were furniture, furniture, right? Yes. So I would sit in between the stereo speakers and just listen to that on repeat over and over and those, over. Those, those sounds, those, those consoles, they actually put out some really good sound. Right? I they remember sound, the big yeah. one my parents had in the living room mm-hmm. and it would fill the house. And I still have, I mentioned it to some of the other guests, I still have my Onkyo turntable, my Onkyo receiver, oh, wow. double cassette deck, KLH nice. speakers nice. That, that go back. Yeah. And I li- I've pulled out tons of cassettes and I've been listening to them recently and they really sound good. And the vinyl, I mean, it sounds oh. so good because of the warmth and mm-hmm. the depth because music today, you know, is, is, as we know, is recorded, tends to be recorded sort of louder mm-hmm. and it's sort of sometimes in your face. Mm-hmm. And when you put on other you know music from maybe a few, headphones you let it fill the house and bounce off the walls i love when i have the stereo on and it's filling the house and it's bouncing off the walls Mm -hmm. and or it's music's coming it's really cool it may sound strange but i'm sure you get it sometimes i love when music is coming from behind me the speakers are way behind me and it's coming over me Mm -hmm. there's just something really cool about that Uh, in fact you can't see this but over on the wall way over there i have a giant television and the speakers for that television are way back over there on a ba- on a back wall there for the exact reason you're talking about. I like to have the experience of looking this way and the sound washing over me. That's that's I love that. Yeah, there's something just really, really cool about that. And when you have an opportunity to have that sound like that, it's really yeah. awesome. Yeah. So um, so you grew up in Alabama. I did. So what when what was that opportunity for you when you then said? Did you move straight to L.A. or did you go east at all? So my story goes like this. Um, My mom and I moved to Mississippi uh, Mm -hmm. when I was young also. So I spent kind of half of my life early in Alabama and the next 10 years or so in in Mississippi. Uh, Then I went to the University of Alabama for, for college to study anything but music, I might add. Uh, so, so I got a degree in sociology. Oh, that's cool. You know, I guess which, I, which music sort of plays into that in a way, you know, psychology, yeah, sociology, right? You know? it, it, yeah. I wanted to know how people worked. Right. So that was really what it was about was, was how can I figure out how to relate to someone I've just met? Well, getting some techniques in class really helped me quite a lot. Yeah. You know? And so, so that was a, a big part of it for me. Um, but after Alabama, I moved to the Atlanta, Georgia area for a minute. Then to Nashville. So I decided to give it, give the Nashville thing a shot. Um, and you know, with apologies to everyone that hears me say this, so please don't hate me for what I'm about to say. I don't like country music at all. And I bet people <laughs> probably assume as soon as they hear Alabama and of Mississippi course. and Nashville that that is your thing. Right. But it doesn't necessarily mean right. Yeah. Exactly. No. You know? So, so I've really struggled with the, with the country scene there. Uh, so and, what was the music that was, you know, as you were, you yeah. know, a kid or teenager and coming up the ranks, what were you listening to? Well, I was a child of the 80s. So for me, um, being an 80s child. Kaja I Gugu. Listened, and- <laughs> yeah, certainly. You know, the yeah, pop music yeah. of the, the radio music, Duran Duran, of course, all of that stuff 
was certainly part of my my world. The police, oh, yeah. number one with a bullet. They were absolutely my most influential band of all time. Yeah. But also I was listening to what they called college rock back then. Mm, yeah. And, and do you remember college rock? It was, sure. it was, it became known as alternative music. So things that weren't necessarily on the radio, Guadalcanal Diary mm -hmm. and early REM and things like that. Absolutely. That stuff really hit me. And it wasn't so much from a drumming perspective. It was more just musically. I liked the arrangements or I might like a vocal or whatever it might be. Right. Yeah. I remember going to the Rathskeller with buddies and they thought they were fancy if they were ordering a Heineken because it was imported. <laughs> <laughs> right. There you go. See? That was like the, ex it was exciting. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. So, uh, so then how did, so Nashville. Yeah. Right. So right. how long were you in Nashville for? Almost eight years. And I, it took me a minute to figure out my place. Session you know? work where you were doing a lot of session stuff. Zero. Couldn't, I couldn't buy a session in that. Yeah, really? Yeah. So I, I was playing live and I ended up playing with Kenny Rogers Jr. For a number of years. Oh yeah. Sure. And, and uh, that, that was actually kind of my intro into a little bit bigger career. Yeah. And then I worked with a, a, a jazz guitarist. Uh, there's kind of one really tremendous jazz guitarist in Nashville. His name is Stan Lassiter. Mm -hmm, and sure. so, so I worked with Stan for a year and a half or so. And when I got that gig, people went, oh, this guy, he must be able to play. Yeah. So, so it was a different kind of thing. Uh, and that, that led to gig that led to gigs that led to gigs. And, and so I was able to start, you know, I left my day job behind and, and started playing full time. Uh, which, by the way, was 22 years ago now, which is hard Isn't to imagine. Isn't that amazing? Huh? Yeah. And so from that point forward, uh, that that uh, that led me to to being out on tour with with Kenny. It was the band was called Shiloh. Mm -hmm. And so we were out, right. out doing all sorts of things with Shiloh. And uh, the truth of the matter is uh, the band got fired. We were in Detroit and we were flying back from Detroit. Having just and played, you a refused gig. to play Motown. Something like that, right? <laughs> we it, we had a moment with our guitar player, and I was the musical director, and our guitar player froze. We had about a mm. hundred thousand people in front of us, and I think he just got stage fright to the point he oh, couldn't handle it. Yeah, and yeah. so, uh, 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 you know, um, so yeah. uh, oh, I'm seeing Jane over here. I'm sorry to interrupt this, saying that I lost points on the country music thing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry. You James. can see that from that far away. You got yeah. good eyesight. I have a mon I have a monitor, <laughs> right big screen there. with big font, right? <laughs> I do. Yes. yes. I saw uh, that, but I wasn't going to mention. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. And so, she's in Sweden. Oh no, kidding. Well, I'm sorry about that, Jane. That's oh, it. Hey. Goodness. You'll uh, hear some other cool things that he does. <laughs> oh, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing Marilyn didn't like it either. I'm so sorry. Merlin in Canada. I, yeah. I, 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 Merlin, my bad. Yes. See, I but Kathleen in New York City welcomes you. Thank you. And Kathleen. Anne in Southern California says, I love Star Wars. Love visiting wow. Star Wars land yeah. at Disneyland. So magical. So good. So good. Yeah. And <laughs> Toby has a console stereo, paid $10 for it, and it works great. No, there you go. See? Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. <clears throat> Maureen is here from Arizona. Which nice. is really cool. Welcome, Maureen. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> so then uh, you started, then you oh. decided to go west from Nashville. Yes. So on the plane plane ride back from Detroit, Yeah. Uh, I, we got fired. So, <laughs> um, and, and so it was like, okay, well, if, if that's the case, I had been flying out here to LA and working a decent amount. So I told my wife what had happened on the flight back. And she said, well, why don't we just go? Let's just go west. And, and literally, I think that was, well, I know what day that was. It was my birthday in June. Uh, so, so we got fired on my birthday. Great present, right? Um, and by July 31st, we were headed West. So we just did it. We were ready to move. That's cool. Yeah. So we knew that uh, West was where, yeah. what was it about going West versus maybe East? Cause I guess East probably would have been more theater and Broadway and other yeah. types of things. What yeah. was it about were there opportunities already waiting for you in the West or you were just going to, to make them and get into connected with the studios, the networks? Yeah. You know, honestly, I thought that I had some opportunities here. I knew a, a handful of people, 10, yeah. or so people out here. And I thought, okay, this looks like it might be nice. You know, um, it's, uh, it, it, it became something that when I moved out here, I suddenly became buddy, the competition. Mm -hmm. So a lot of those people that were friends disappeared a bit. Uh, so that was a little challenging. Um, but, uh, once, once I got out here, the whole idea about coming West was that little handful of people 
Yeah. And you know, I like the, the vibe of LA. I like the city. I like, I, I like the weather, you know, the beach is here and I like the music scene here quite a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. So there were, there were a number of draws. So as you were setting up shop there in LA, what was some of the first things that were coming your way? Uh, was it <laughs> session work or what was happening for you? You know what? The truth is I really kind of started over. I, I did. didn't, I did not actually have the, the leg up that I had expected to have. So uh, Craigslist, I, mm -hmm. I started reading every Craigslist ad that I could, you, whatever it was, if I could take a gig, I took it. Yes. And I did something like 300 ish gigs over about an 18 month period. So you that's did. a, that's a gig every other day kind of thing. Yes. Um, and it was all Craigslist. Just anything. It was all, yeah. I mean, yeah. just as things were popping up. Yeah. Um, so then when did things really start to get serious? When did people start to really, uh, oh, you got thumbs up from Jane in Sweden. So you recover. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. I promise yeah. I'm not, I'm not a bad guy. because. <laughs> I don't look much so um, when did things start to get really, you know, professional, serious, all of this yeah. where people started calling on you and what was some of the first work that you were doing in LA? Well, I got involved with a band called AM Session. AM Session was a good band, but you know, it was a local band, but we were, we were starting to sell out rooms like the Viper Room and the Whiskey A Go Go. We started having some success locally and they came about via Craigslist, by the way. Um, so, so, <laughs> I so, tell you that Craig, is there oh, a Craig? <laughs> I think there's got to be, right? Um, so with that, it was really interesting because I started getting calls from people. Hey, I saw you with AM session. Can you come record this thing or can you play this thing? And I, I play a specific grip with my left hand that people comment on. And I guarantee you, if Toby is here, she's going to comment on that. If she's here, she's going to tell you what it's she's called. She's here. Oh, oh yeah. she. Hey, Toby. Yeah. Um, she bought the stereo system for 10 bucks. That's right. Oh, that was her. You put yeah. that up, didn't you? That's right. My bad. Um, so, so the grip that I play is called traditional grip and it's this sort of thing. So you don't see a lot of rock and roll guys or, or funk guys playing this way. Usually we play this way, but I play this way, which is from my marching band background. And um, as I was playing, the thing that really happened was a guy approached me after a show at the Viper Room. We had done a CD release party. That's how long ago this was. Uh, and the CD release party happened at the Viper Room. A guy approached me, he says, hey, you've got some marching in your background, don't you? Yes, I do. And as we talked, he, he said, well, I need somebody to do some music for me. Would you be interested? And, I, you know, who are you? And he handed me his business card and he was a music supervisor at Fox Sports. He happened to be in the audience. Uh, so he said, why don't your band's great. Why don't you guys come and do come do some shows, do some songs for me? I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll talk to the guys. Yeah. Well, uh, I talked to them and they weren't as interested as I was. Uh, so I, they, they didn't want to do it uh, ultimately. And I, I, I called and set up a meeting and I walked into the meeting at the 20th Century Fox lot. And uh, the guy, Jerry, that I was talking to there, he said, well, where's the band? And I said, I'm the band. What do you need? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I just, right. I was brash about it like that. I kind of felt like I had to be. And, he said, well, I need you to record a couple of songs for me that we can use in some broadcasts. Can you do that? Sure. And he said, you can do that at home. And I said, of course I can. Mm -hmm. Video at home? Of course I do. You know how to record and produce? Sure. No problem. Right. Lying through my teeth. Um, but I had to be that guy. And so he hired me to do two songs. Uh, and, and I'll just put it out like this. Um, he paid me what at that point in my life was, you know, I might as well have won the lottery. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there were royalties to come on big, the background. Big time stuff. Yeah, it was. So that wow. that was the real intro. And two songs became five, became 10, became, became, became. Was Fox. Wow. So you realized also, yeah. too, that, you know, creating that kind of music and playing it really and then composing it mm -hmm. as well. You know, it, it's it's big stuff. It could be big money, you know, just like voiceover work for, that's right. you know, on-air people. That's it's right. um, so that's cool stuff. And that really, did that become the dominance of your career is creating music for television and, <laughs> and film and networks. You became one of those who really creates great 
production music and underscoring. And I've always loved all that. You give me a good, exciting news theme <laughs> for eyewitness news, and I'm excited. Yeah, da -da -da -da, right, right. You know, boom, sh bam, sh helicopters, and that's cool. <laughs> right. yeah, that's cool stuff. And there's a lot of work that goes into that. Mm -hmm. It may only be 60 seconds, but what they have to right. do to create that feeling in 60 seconds to draw you in yeah uh like with a commercial commercial music or uh, we had lloyd schwartz on mm -hmm. uh of course you know from mm -hmm. uh the brady bunch mm -hmm. and right. gilligan's island all right. and we were talking about that we were talking about the brady bunch and yeah. of course his dad sherwood created of of you know, all of that at paramount and everything yeah. and i mentioned to him i said you know i've always loved you know as uh, working in tv myself but yeah. even as a kid i've always paid attention to of course, the theme music. Mm -hmm. And we used to hear a lot more of that with television shows. You'd have a full theme. Oh, yeah. You can hum the theme to I Dream a Genie and all right. these shows. And then they would play the credits at the end with mm -hmm. the, the full theme all the way to the end with the big finish or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, but I also loved the underscoring. I loved how the underscoring would sort of come in mm -hmm. and almost confirm the feelings or enhance the feelings that you have from the dialogue, the scene, the, the setting, the, the emotion that the actors and actresses are doing and mm -hmm. the camera angles and the lighting and the set and all of that. But then right. that music comes in and it's like, pow. Right. And you know, when you get a chance to create music that does create a sense of uh, mm -hmm. feeling, no matter what it is, excitement, sadness, right connection it's a cool thing isn't it it is in fact i'm currently working on a film a short film called brief and it's a it's kind of a neo-noir crime comedy so so uh, trying to create the right feel for that you know um a comedy <laughs> with that for sure um it's really it it is truly funny and and I've been trying to figure out because it starts out so dramatically and it's, it's clear that there's about to be a brawl and there's no brawl. It becomes this whole jump up to thing where they're being funny with each other. Uh, so creating that, that space and, and making it, you know, have this, the feel of a 1940s swing that yeah. then morphs into something a little more kind of thing. Yes. To make it funny. So what you're asking is, is yes. I mean, it's, it's a gift, honestly, for me to be able to do that. I, I love that I get asked to do things like that. So I mentioned that you have, and it's probably even more, uh, over 200,000 placements yeah. uh, on network television. Yeah. Uh, tell the audience, uh, I know, but tell the audience what placements are and how all yeah. that works. So oftentimes when I'm asked, you know, oh my gosh, you've got 200,000 songs. No, uh, I've got a, a library of 350, 400 songs that I've written um, or co-written, I might add, because I do have some co-writers that, that, that help me with some things. So my library consists of, of that many songs. A placement can be, let's say the song is two minutes long. A placement can be the full thing, or it can be a one minute version of that, or a 30 second version of that, or even a three second version of that. But each one of those counts as a placement. And, you know, I get paid royalties on the back end of that based on the number of ears that can be on it, based on, on how much of it they use. Was it featured? Was it underscore? Was it background? So that that's actually what that means. So I've had my music placed. It's closer to about 250,000 times now. Um, and uh, when I, when I hear the bio that you read at the top of the show, uh, you know, I don't think of my career like that. I just keep thinking, what's the next thing I can do? What's next, right? Yeah, yeah but it's it's a kind of amazing to me that I've been able to do this because I am a drummer first. I sing pretty well and I play very bad piano. So, <laughs> so, so that's that's what I do when I'm writing. I play very bad piano and I sing over the top of it, and then yeah. I'll hire players to to do to do other parts of music for me. And I think I saw a picture somewhere you, where you were. Uh strumming on the guitar and then you showed your fingers here's what it you know looks like when you are trying to do the guitar <laughs> that's probably right because uh, i am i'm the worst guitar player that ever lived i'm just awful uh, i have one hanging in the closet over there but uh, yeah you know boom, it's terrible <laughs> <laughs> well we dug something up and we're gonna we're gonna show this here it's kind of cool and it's it's a really cool video it's um 
I get paid for this. Yep, I sure do. Oh my. <laughs> and this is really cool. You're you're actually, I guess, sort of it's like you're working on it's like a television show theme, and you're sort of working it out on the drums. Okay. Did you want to preface it at all, or just play it and talk about it after? Uh, yeah, because I'm not sure which one it is. <laughs> all right, it's cool. You're casual. You go up there and you're playing like a rhythm. You're sort of getting it going, and it's it's for a television show at the time that I think was being created, and you were sort of working out. Okay. you know, the, uh, the percussive and, and here it is. Okay, Enjoy gang. And we'll be back. We've got lots more. Buddy Gibbons <laughs> is joining us live from the studio in Los Angeles here on the gym master show live. Hey gang. So, uh, this is a tracking session for a television theme song for a Netflix series. And um, this is my job, <laughs> go figure. So it's country hoedown. Let's see if I've got it already here. Who knows, maybe I can get it in one. We'll try.
Now, how much fun did you have doing that? And my God, I hope you jumped in uh, like a hot bubble bath and just like worked it all out. Oh, wow. <laughs> that I was cool to see that because most people don't see sort of the behind the scenes. Now, you, uh, the headphones, yeah. were you listening to a track and following it? How does that all work for our audience watching? It's cool yeah, to see. Sure. First, let me tell you that everybody that was com complimenting me, thank you so much. I appreciate that a lot. It was it was a lot of fun. Um, the, uh, the That song and in the headphones, I, I composed the theme song for a show about Route 66. Uh, so it was not, but it was not, you know, get your kicks, of course. Uh, but this, the show is about Route 66. And that was the theme song. I had already written all the other parts and I had a click track just, just going click, 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 along with the, the guitar and banjo and things like that coming through my headphones. So that's what I was listening to. And I was providing the drum part last. I'd created everything else first drums were last and that's what i was listening to so that's why you heard a couple of stops a couple of things that were moving this way and moving that way was so that i could get the get the composition side of things just right and apparently the keyboard was falling off to my left so i had to push the keyboard back up. <laughs> <laughs> now what do you do like when you have something like that or even when you're on stage or you're going to be spending you know several hours in the studio recording yeah. maybe not that studio but on location at mm -hmm. one of the other studios um do you do anything physically or mentally to prepare? Obviously, there's a lot of mental prowess, but there's a lot of physicality that goes into mm. it. Um, anything you do to limber up and get prepared? <laughs> yeah, um, I am. Uh, I'm. Uh, I'm a a man who is in the. I'm, I'm in my fifties now, and I'm I'm a man in a twenty something year old's game. So I have to stay physically ahead of the game. The good news for me is that my career is pretty established. So I take really solid care of my body. I eat really well. I don't drink alcohol. I don't smoke. So I really take care of myself. And in doing that, I have found that I've been able to stay ahead of that curve a bit, you know. Um, but as far as the 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 day to day things, I always I have practice pads, which are foam pads that allow me to warm up. And I have a series of exercises that take 27 minutes, a 27 minute workout that, that I do on the pads. And so I'll, I'll sit and do that and usually moving very, very slowly to get my hands moving initially. And then I move into some more, you know, some from simple to complex over the course of that 27 minutes. So that's that's what I do. Wow, that is yeah. so. It is a bit of a process to really, yeah. you know, yeah. get things going. But yeah. uh, you know, the results are incredible, and and people were also noticing the the drum set and um, <laughs> yeah. some of the drums that you have and the sets yeah. and everything are incredible. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is. Uh, I saw someone ask. I think it was Jen. Hi, Jen. Uh, you asked what my symbols of choice were. Well, you're looking in this this picture. I'm a Piesty player. I really love the Piesty symbols. Um, the drum set that, that was in that video and the one that's in this picture here is a DW Maple Spruce kit. And uh, the folks at DW have been incredibly good to me through the years. I'm in, I endorse their products and have been with them for a number of years. Uh, I, and they gave, they gave me two drum sets. This is one of them that you're looking at that are every size drum that they make. So in, in the event that I need a really small one, then I'll, I'll use that. If I need a really big one, I've got it on the shelf. So I can always do that. But uh, yeah, this kit, the one that you're looking at is actually called a Turks and Caicos finish because it's from ocean to sand. If you take a look at that, yeah. um, that's what that is. And it's over a Tamo ash finish. So it's a ridiculously custom drum set that they built for me a few years back. Look at this. Oh, there you go. Right, right, right. There you go. So that's my that's my uh, drum shelf that's over to my right here, and that is the that's the Turks and Caicos that you're looking at. In fact, along with a snare drum collection on on shelf two, I've got about twenty snares up there, some behind that you can't see, uh, and I've got, probably got ten more snares at my drum tech's place. Uh, so, so, you know, if I need a snare drum sound, I can pretty well cover it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've got it all. It's yeah, like a, it's yeah. like a toy chest. Very much. <laughs> there's, there's more. Oh yeah. See, that's this is an older this the room that I'm currently sitting in. This is about a year ago, actually, before the pandemic. We we had this up as the look of the room and the snare drums, as you can see there in the tower in the back. Yeah. So yeah, really, really, really cool. There's, there's some more. 
we gather. Uh, so that is the set that I'm currently sitting behind. Um, that is my broken glass. Someone else probably, Jen, asked what my what my uh, my favorite wrap is. Well, you're looking at it. Um, this is yeah. it. It's called broken glass finish, and it, this is a DW um, maple shell drum set, and it's it's my favorite sounding kit. I really like this kit quite a lot. And, and like with the other one, I have every size that they make so that if I need a, a, an eight inch drum, then I have it. If I need yeah. an 18 inch drum, I have it. So and you got that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is another <laughs> side of the studio that people usually don't get a chance to see, right? That's correct. That's correct. This again, this picture is again about a year old, but you can see my, my Star Wars toys up there. Um, yes. but, but that's the control room <laughs> side of things that you're looking at there. Um, and so right now, let me see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've got nine Star Wars toys up there now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's the control surface, the, the control room portion of the of the room here. Really, really cool. Oh, sort you. of yeah. sort of the heart of the operation. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Now that's yeah. not mine, but that's another really beautiful DW kit. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I like that a lot. For so you sure. have an opportunity to have a lot of different sponsors too, and people that you work with. Yeah, I do. I do. Now yeah. here's an actual session happening, right? Yeah. In fact, as I'm looking at this, that's Kyle Newmaster conducting a string section. I'm actually on this side of the glass. I was producing this section at East West Studios, which you may know in, in LA, that's where the Beach Boys did pet sounds and whatnot. In that that's very great. room is where, where those guys did that. So I'm on this side of the glass producing and I do a decent amount of producing. Um, but the, that was a string session, a string session for Brian Oshab's soon to be released, uh, record. That'll be out. I think that's going to be out soon. Uh, we, we finished cool. it about a month ago, so I think it's coming soon. So uh, for the producing side of it, yeah. uh, are you loving that too? Getting a chance to, uh, be a prolific producer as much as the composer and the musician as well. <laughs> You know, for years, Jim, I wouldn't call myself a, a producer because I kind of went through this this thing of of uh, anybody that owns a laptop calls himself a music producer. Everybody's now. a producer. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's and, an expert. Yeah. Right. And I just refused to call myself that. And one day I said that very phrase to my wife and she said, how many songs have you had on TV? And I said, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand. And she said, and who produced us? And I did. Well, I think you can call yourself a producer. <laughs> uh, so I took her word at her word there. And, and uh, I like producing almost as much as I like anything else. Yeah. It, it's so fun to help other people bring their vision to life. I'm not yes. trying to put my stamp on something when I'm producing it. I'm trying to bring the very best out of the, the people that I'm working with. And uh, right. I'm working right this very minute with Bonnie Gordon, who's an actress on Star Trek. She's got uh, she's got a new record coming and we're producing it here in my studio. Um, and it's been an absolute blast. I'm not even playing drums on it. So it's, it's a first for me to not play drums to only produce. Yeah. Wow. It's been awesome to have another drummer. You know, go. I know what you're up to, Mr. Drummer Man. I want you to do right. it a different way. You know. Now, do you, when you're producing, do you bring them all in, or somebody else bringing the other musicians in to this session? It's a mixed bag. Bonnie brought you can her suggest own players. People if you want. Yeah, or... yeah. I mean, I certainly like with Brian's record. That was the one I just did prior to Bonnie. That's why I'm talking about it as much. But I brought in my people for that. You know, and uh, the string players that you saw are all from the LA Philharmonic and whatnot. So we just the the music world, the TV world. You know this. Yeah. It's it's a small circle. So you it all is. kind of get to know each other. Work with some uh, of the same people yeah. again and again, which is really cool. Yeah. And if you do good work, you know they'll bring you back and. Uh, right. And you have a good time with it yeah, all, which, yeah. which is awesome. Here's another great shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's just about a week old. I just took that picture. I, I was just recently, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, I'm wearing the same watch band. <laughs> you are? <laughs> yeah. There it is. There it is. There yeah, and yeah, there. Right, there and there. Right there. Yeah, that's, that's how recent that was. Here's another great shot. Oh, yeah. So, so that is the kit that I used for the Dodgers. Um, and I, I recorded that in an, in another studio yeah. and did the whole Dodgers thing. But so that was the DW kit that they did for me for the Dodgers. Is that not incredible to have an opportunity to work with uh, the Dodgers? And, uh, yes. you know, we actually have uh, a clip. Uh, this is Let's Go Dodgers. Tell us about how that came about, how you got a chance to create that for sure. the Los Angeles Dodgers. Well, um, I was uh, I grew up in Mississippi as an L.A. Dodgers fan. 
Oh, you were a Dodger fan. Go figure, right? Um, but I was a my Dodger father fan. was uh, was a Dodger fan when they were in Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> oh, sure, of course. <laughs> then, yeah. then uh, he has since gone to like I think a lot of the Dodger fans, if they didn't move west to go and follow the Dodgers, and they were still uh, on the East Coast, a lot of them, and if they weren't already Yankee fans, they right. went with the Mets. They went with the Mets. They sure, the Mets. Yeah, sure, yeah. Well, as a, as a Dodgers fan, as a kid, I, I remember watching, you know, Oral Hershiser and these guys yeah. play and, and just being kind of blown away by them. Unreal. But uh, I guess it really, it really was. Um, fast forward, obviously, to, to me living out here. My wife was working for Fox Sports. Now, how about that for some synergy? I was um, going to say, yes. Yeah. But anything that she touches, and she's now a vice president there. So so anything that she touches. She is. I yeah. I, really, I, that I didn't know. Yeah. Well, I, I can't provide any music for anything that she does. So it actually hurt oh, me. There's a whole thing policy? <laughs> there's, or there's a conflict of interest. Yeah. So she can't and, hire me for anything. And probably there's like, times yeah. where she said, oh, my God, you would have been great on that. But. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. So <laughs> it, it, I was like, really? I can't give you anything no so you know uh it, it, the talk about a drag but anyway mm. she was working for fox sports and we became friends with one of the vps over at the dodgers just by virtue of, of, of being around each other right. we really liked each other this guy named greg taylor and greg called me one day in 2017 and he said hey look um we need a new intro piece for the big screen and when the team's coming out and we're, we want to use it for television we want to use it for the internet would you be interested in doing it yeah, I think so. <laughs> I mean, was that even a question? Uh, so, so he, you know, gave me some parameters and said, "Just go do your thing." So I created two songs for them, and they chose the one that they wanted, and created this whole "Let's Go Dodgers" thing. At that point, it was trying to bring the the LA fans back to the stadium because fans were fans were a little little tired of not winning, I think. And so, yeah. uh, so, so the, the stadium wasn't quite as full in 2016 and 15 as, yeah. it, as they would have liked. So they were, they were showing this thing where hey, let's go Dodgers going, 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 going was happening all around the city. And in the video you'll see it, but people are kind of drawn to the boom, 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 boom yeah. thing. Yeah. And then, then everything that happens from there on out is me. And in fact, the drums that you showed a minute ago, are still the drums that when in the stadium you hear let's go dodgers boom, 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 that's me that you're still hearing inside the stadium which i just think is so fun you know that they took samples of my drums for that uh so so that's how that came about greg hired me and i said yes wow. and away we went the dun, dun 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 is the equivalent to when the guy would be on the organ dun, 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 dun. yes which we always heard for years as well. Absolutely. It's, well, let's take a listen to this. Uh, we got a chance to preview it earlier today when we were uh, producing the show. It's very cool. And uh, Buddy Gibson is responsible for it. You don't have to be a Dodger fan, folks, to appreciate <laughs> the work that you're going to enjoy here. <laughs> here it is. Let's go Dodgers.
That's going to be in everybody's heads the rest of the week, <laughs> whether you're a Dodger fan or not. So, yeah. yeah and, and people have heard that a million times. Absolutely. Yeah. Gina says, love this. And what comes to mind? Play ball. Play ball. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Toby says, let's go, Dodgers. Let's go. Smiles. Uh, Scooching over, says Mr. Gibbons. Hey, he watches my show. How are you doing? That's great. Yeah. Welcome to the Gym Master Show yeah. Live. Heart's coming in from Anne. And she Thank said you. something cool. She said, that's awesome. And I'm going to think of you, buddy, when I'm at the stadium. Excellent. Thank she's, you so much. She's there in uh, Southern California. And she grew up uh, going to the Dodger games. Oh, that's nice, the home team. Nice. Yeah. And... Uh, Maureen in Arizona says, sorry, Jim, sorry, <laughs> Kathleen, sorry, buddy, but it's St. Louis Cardinals all day, every day for Maureen. <laughs> Got to rip it, Maureen. I totally understand. <laughs> That's it, right? Yeah. Uh, still enjoying America's uh, great pastime there. Yeah, yeah. It's, hey, uh, yeah. You know, can I tell you what the coolest part about doing that whole thing was? Yeah, tell us. Being me and Greg, the, the guy that hired me, were the only two people in Dodger Stadium. Really? Yeah, so you got to... down on down on the field. <laughs> You got Just to experience that. that. That was wow. unbelievable. Just mm. unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. The feeling of sitting there and being there and you just felt the weight of the history and, 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 and the experience of the, the stadium surrounding. <clears throat> oh, that was incredible. Now, did you play baseball at all as a kid uh, here and there? Very badly. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> I was in, I'm left-handed. So they always okay. would put me in right field. I was a sure. right fielder being left, but uh but yeah, definitely uh, fun. And that's cool because I've heard that song a million times. Sure, sure. You know, it's like, that's cool. you know, when you get something like that going, it's, yeah. and every time you hear it, it's, this is like legacy kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Yes, it is. And I, and I can't deny that it opened a few more doors in my career path for me. It, it really did. It Absolutely. Helped, me, it helped establish me on a on a very different level. A different level. Yeah. Ann just did a super sticker. Uh, thank you, Ann. You're the best. We appreciate that very, very much. She just did that uh, in support of the series. And we love you very much. Thank you very much for that. Great comments. E you even have uh, heart colors coming in from Kathleen Walker. Although, are those are those red hearts or are they orange? with the blue for the New York Mets because uh, she, she works with the New York Mets. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Oh, nice. So Kathleen. I, That's so I don't know. The, the hearts look a shade orange, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> if you need any music, let me know. <laughs> that, yeah, that's right, Kathleen. We might. Um, yeah. Uh, if, if the music helps the Mets, send us the music pronto. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> they made some changes. They've invested, which is good. They've needed to do that for a while. Yeah. Got me fired up, Ann yeah. says as well. And Mona is watching in uh, New Orleans. Hey, Mona, good to see you here. Hey, well, Mona. I love it. Uh, go Dodgers. And I love the way she spells go. See it? The, yeah, the yeah. I see there. it. I grew up, my, my Mississippi hometown was only about 80 miles from there. So I spent a from good New bit Orleans, of time right? in New Orleans. Yeah. My, my cousin's family is from New Orleans, too. It's great. And Mona actually sent me some spices and coffees from down under there. And uh, ooh, did you get good. some chicory? And rubs, too. Oh, yes, nice. and some rubs, some great rubs, and yeah, good stuff. Now, you, yeah. I mentioned the College Football Hall of Fame too, mm -hmm. yeah. and you had an opportunity to uh, create something for them as well, huh? I did, I sure did. Uh, they they were looking for a theme song, and here we go. It was kind of the same story, although I didn't know anybody there. Um, that was a, that was a, a moment of just kismet that happened, and uh, I think they had seen the Dodgers thing. And uh, the next thing you know, I'm I'm creating this whole marching football sort of themed song for the College Football Hall of Fame. And they must have run that thing for, I don't know, three, four years. That just kept on and kept on and kept on running. It was fantastic. Pays car payments and other bills and mortgages and <laughs> yeah. yes, residuals are always a good thing in our industry, aren't they? They are. And, you know, I went to the University of Alabama, like I mentioned, and I was the drumline instructor there for, for a couple of years. So uh, you don't go to Alabama and come out of there not a college football fan. It's pretty yeah. tough oh, to do. Yes. So yeah. so for me, being part of the College Football Hall of Fame was really special. I, I loved that. For me, it was Dodgers as a kid. The kid in me was loving it. And then the college kid in me was loving the whole college football thing. Now, when did you get to go back home to Alabama and they realized that you created that yeah. music? Not at all. <laughs> like hometown kid makes 
big, you know, kind of thing. You know what? I, in Mississippi, which is where I graduated from high school yeah, and whatnot, yeah. they, they'd certainly, I'm a little bit of a local celebrity there, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's, you get to go to the front of the line at the supermarket, right? Once in a while. Once That's, in a while. <laughs> well, here yeah. is that. We do have that clip, which is oh, really, nice. really cool to uh to share with our audience. So let's we'll cue that up. Here it is, the College Football Hall of Fame. Uh take a look at this gang. Some more of uh, Buddy's amazing work. Here we go. Football Hall of Fame and Chick-fil-A fan experience puts you closer to the game than ever before. Featuring over 30,000 square feet of interactive exhibits that make it feel like game day every day. Get your tickets now at cfbhall.com. <laughs> really, really cool. That, that, that is great. awesome. That well is done. Hey, Gina, you know, I was thinking about this too, and Gina... Uh, beat me to it. Good question. Did you ever get a chance to meet Vin Scully? I did. I met him a I couple did. of times, actually. Yeah, he he was just the kindest, kindest mm. man ever. And you know, he's he's one of those guys. When you talk to him, you you again, you feel the weight of the history there and yes. that voice. The voice when you hear it on the radio or on TV, and then all of a sudden it turns and looks at you, and your the voice is talking to you. It, it, it was almost unsettling because he was, it, you know, there was his voice coming saying, "Oh, hello, buddy. Nice to meet you." Uh, and that was absolutely phenomenal to me. So, yeah. Uh, well, I mentioned, you know, this incredible array of uh, clients that you have. Uh, I mentioned Comcast and mm -hmm. CBS Sports, the Cowboys, 20th Century Fox, Univision, mm -hmm. ESPN, uh, NFL, Animal Planet, Hulu. Mm -hmm. uh, you've worked, you know, working on that sh show theme with Netflix, the Chelsea Handler show, Tanked. Mm -hmm. Uh, tell us about maybe some of the shows and different things where we would recognize because people are going to want to Google and yeah. they're gonna look for this now where we would recognize the music. You know, that's actually a challenge because like Chelsea Handler, I've never met anybody on that show. They use my stuff from the library. Now, the interesting thing for me is that I am not. Let, let me phrase it this way. There are a lot of different libraries available for shows. You know this already. My library is a little more specific because I got involved with library music before library music was what everybody was doing. So they will request something specifically from me as opposed to let's hear what all he's got in his library. And all I can figure is that a producer that knows my music from the Chelsea Handler show knew that he wanted something of mine and used it in the show. So oftentimes I never know if something of mine has been used until I get the, the BMI statement every quarter and i'll go through it and look at it and go, oh wow i didn't know that they were using it for the oh that's cool that happens a lot for me that's how i have so many of those placements is that that library of 350 ish songs it just gets used over and over and over again but i also i'm contracted right now to do an album's worth of new material for um sinclair media group who owns uh, Bally Sports Network. Sorry, they just changed the, the name. So the new Bally Sports Network, I, I've just been contracted to do a full album's worth of material for them. So it will start airing in August-ish, probably around college football, actually. Wow. Uh, is when it will start happening. So it's it's sort of a different thing. The yeah. I know when the commission work is going to happen. But yeah, you're being commissioned. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that cool? It is actually that's a good setup. So they they know your style, they, yeah. they trust in you, and they yeah. know that you're gonna deliver uh yeah. something that matches the feeling and, and the vibe yeah. and what they want to get across. Right, right. And you know what? I I don't have a hundred one hundred percent success rate with it. Um sure. you know, I mean uh, one of the networks that I won't mention asked me to do 27 songs and they gave me six weeks to do it. Wow. And, and they said, just go do it. Do your thing. We, we've heard your stuff. Go do it. And I went and did it. And they rejected all 27 songs. All 27? Yeah, because it didn't. there was one element that they wanted that they didn't tell me. And I didn't include that one element in any of them. So it was like, ah, well, if you told me, I would have put it in. No problem. So what happens? Do you go? Do they let you go back to the drawing board, or are they like, that's it? We got to pick. We got to move yeah. on quick. Well, they had to move on from that particular thing, but they they did 
contract me again to do other stuff. But this time they told me, you know, put this, this particular element in. Okay, no problem. And the 27 songs that I, that I didn't sell them, you know, I kept them, put them in the library and they, they start getting used. They can be used for other mm -hmm. things. What are uh, some of the, I mean, everyone is like your baby, of course, but Something what like are that. some of your personal favorites that you've been responsible for that are just, you know, like your top yeah. few that are just, I really love that song. I love that material. Yeah. I love hearing it. That's a yeah. prized possession for me. Which ones for you would be the ones? That's a great question. Um, I, I used to be more precious about it than I am now. Because right. because as as you're trying to provide music for people, you realize that that just because you had an idea, it may not necessarily match theirs. And that right. doesn't mean that what you did was bad or whatever. So I became a lot more flexible. If somebody said, hey, can you do it a little more like X instead of Y? Yeah, OK, I can do that. So so I've become less precious about it through the years. The early stuff I, I'm definitely pretty precious about. I would say that College Football Hall of Fame song is actually called uh, Purple Power. That's what the song is called. And um, it, the Purple Power song is one, if you heard the entire piece instead of, that was just a minute and a half of it, I think. If you heard the full piece, that's something that when I hear it, uh, I was actually, <laughs> it, was, it was used by the Cowboys and I was sitting in the airport in Dallas and I heard heard it come on on TV. And I, I really wasn't paying it any attention. My wife was next to me. We were waiting on the plane. I started kind of going, this is cool. What is, this is cool. And, I'm, and I started to realize, oh, wait. That's, and then I was like, hey, that's that's me. That's me. And so we were sitting there listening to it and they played the whole piece. And that was a real moment for me. So I really I have quite an affinity for Purple Power. Uh, that's one that I'm, I'm pretty proud of. Is purple your favorite color? I'm sort of getting that idea. <laughs> It's not necessarily my favorite color. This was this was a, a thing about the show that I do. Uh, purple just kind of worked. So it, it's just coincidental. Purple Power was actually dedicated to a particular pair of shorts that my wife had. That I really? Is that where that came from? <laughs> I thought that maybe you guys were Prince fans and liked Purple uh, Rain. <laughs> certainly that's true. But uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of it's really funny to me that purple has become such a part of my world. <laughs> So what's a typical day like for you? Um, matter of fact, Merlin's asking, have you played in a band lately? Bands that's, and that's the right question. Lately. Um, I was working with a Canadian uh, R&B band recently. And that's where she is. She's in Ontario. Oh, no kidding. Um, they, I don't know that you would know who they were. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the band. That's awful. I can't remember the name of the band. It, it only lasted about four weeks for me. Um, what in the world was the name of that band? I don't even remember. I'm sorry. Uh, so that was the last band project I did, really. I don't do a lot of that anymore. I, I'm not saying I wouldn't like to, but you know, I, I spend most of my time recording these days. So it's definitely Which, different. Yeah. I mean, it's do you love session work? Is it become yeah, something that you also enjoy? You know, I mean, the live interaction with audiences is fun. It is. Yeah. And, and getting sweaty and throwing down, it's it's fun. Yeah. But I, I come to life when the red light comes on. When Yes. You know, so so when the record light comes on, I'm ready. I'm and ready to go. If I mess up in a recording, I'm like, okay, let me listen to why I did that. It gives me a, check, a chance to think in terms of the creative aspect of it because – one of the things that's a little different about me as a drummer, just speaking purely drumistically, is that I think very much like a composer from behind the drum set. Right. So this is a this is my own mini orchestra with high pitches and low pitches and dark pitches and, and bright pitches. And I, I think of it in those terms. So it's not just about playing a beat for me. It's about right. creating an orchestration. And that's what I like to do in sessions. I create orchestrations on the kit. When you compose, do you compose with the drum first? Um, you would has that ever happen? It, it certainly has happened. There's there's one piece that I did for NASCAR um, that was all about a drum thing. I, I, the drum thing, uh, actually, I was sound checking at, at a live show, and they always say, play your, play your kick drum, play your snare drum, play your cymbals, play your whole set. And when they say play your whole set, it's like, I don't know what to play. So I started figuring out this, this thing to play on the whole set. 
and that led to me creating a song around the piece, the drumming that I did for the sound check. And that ended up being a NASCAR theme for a little while. Uh, wow. Go figure that. But um, yeah. it, uh, the truth of the matter is most of my composition happens in the shower. Uh, and so I'll, I'm singing, I keep my phone handy and I will record, I'll sing into my phone standing in the shower and then put it right? down. And that's, that's what I do. And I come back and <laughs> I, you know, pluck it out badly on piano. and then go from there. <laughs> there is of course, another legendary buddy, buddy rich. Did Absolutely. you ever get a chance to, you know, come across him at all? You know, he actually died before I was, was, was really aware uh, uh, as a drummer, as much as I would love to have met him. Uh, I think I might have been terrified of him. He was a stickler or yeah, yeah he just yeah. I mean, incredible talent. Oh just, my God. You see clips on, you know, YouTube and elsewhere yeah, where he right, would be right. on Johnny Carson and everything else. <laughs> exactly. Just, he'd be unbelievable, you know? Oh, just, without a doubt. Without just, a doubt. Uh, so who are the others? Uh, are there people that you would love to play with? Are there those out there that you're like, gee, it would be a dream to collaborate yeah. with uh, this person or oh, that yeah, person or yeah. this group? My all-time number one, I wish I could get it gig is Sting. I would, uh, I would love to play with Sting. Uh, that, Sting, that, if you're listening, uh, uh, ring him up. Right. He's Seriously. in L.A. Well, he just got a new drummer that I don't know, which is weird because I always know his drummers and I don't know this guy. So how did you get that gig? How was the gig even open? And I didn't know. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so Sting is top. I bet of that, that one list. wasn't on Craigslist. I bet it wasn't. <laughs> wow, could you imagine? Uh, lead drummer. Please reply to Sting. That'd be really great. Yeah, just, I would love that. Um, I would I would love to to play with Billy Joel. That'd be a fun mm, one for me. That'd be mm. really great. Um, I have a thing about Rick Springfield. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Don't know why. I, I just it's... I love I would love to do the the Rick Springfield gig just for fun. Um, yeah. So so those jump to mind. I, I would also there's a band called Porcupine Tree. I'm a gigantic fan of Porcupine Tree. And the reason I'm such a fan is the vocalist and the arrangements are incredible, but also their drummer is just lights out great. I would mm -hmm. love to play in that band, but he's just way better than I am. He's just, <laughs> yeah. I mean, just... that's funny. So, yeah. uh, I mean, are you doing, are you busy seven days a week? Cause you have the home studio. So is this something yeah. where the grind is happening all the time? Or do you get a chance to, do you have yeah. some Zen moments? Do you get a chance to sort of come down from it all, buddy? You know what? I really don't get much downtime. Um, I, I know I, how that is. Yeah. yeah, I know you do. I, I play every day recording something every day or producing something every day. Um, and my hours are crazy. They can be anything from, from you know, noon to, to 3 a.m. That's a pretty, I get up earlier than that, but I don't even turn my phone on until 10 a.m. Because you but know, I, right? Yeah, it's going to start I, ringing. Right. So I need to kind of keep things cool in the early part of the morning and go sit outside and have a cup of coffee and, and gather myself for the day. Um, and, and I really come to life about two o'clock in the afternoon and work until two or three in the morning. That's, that's pretty typical for me. Um, and I, I'm, I do my own show called Groove Diner After Dark on Mondays. And that show, you know what it's like to prep for a show. So, so prepping for that show usually takes my weekends because it's a Monday show. So it's Saturday, Sunday prep for the show on Monday. And that, uh, that's been, a, been a, a real learning experience, trying to figure out how to do, do a show that's a full production has been a challenge. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's really what I do. The thing that suffers the most is my drumming. I don't get to play for the sake of playing the way I would like to. I don't get to be the creative drummer guy. I don't get to, to sit down and just play these things the way I once did. And, and that sometimes is troubling. I wish I, could, I had a little more time to, to get better at this because I'm always wanting to be better and better and better and better at this yeah it's hard yeah. to do that if you can't play every single day as a practice if you can't practice every single day you can't practice every day yeah. what uh do you love mentoring others and teaching others it sounds like you it's right up your alley to yeah. to inspire others you know coming up the ranks or whatever it may be you know um every summer I go back to my hometown and, and I do two different drum camps. One is a college level at a college that's about 40 miles away. And one is a high school level. 
And I, I do these camps for kids. Anybody can come to the camp. There's no charge. I don't charge anybody to come to the camps. Um, so I go do these camps because I, I, I hope that my story can be inspiring. I'm not a rock star. I am not even an Instagram star. Uh, the invisible rock star thing. My friend Dan started calling me that many years ago. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it is, it's a cool thing. It is right. Yeah. And he, he calls me that because, because of what you said at the top, you know, you may not have heard of me, but you've certainly heard me. Yeah. Uh, and so I try to show the kids at the camps and, and you know, the truth is the college age camp can be anywhere from, from college up to, I've got a 53 year old that comes to, to that camp. So, so sure. anybody, like yeah. I said, anybody can come. Um, but for me, the giving back portion of it is what I'm credited with, but it's less about giving back and more about saying, you can do this too. If I could do this, if you want a different life, if you want to push into a different avenue than what might be available locally, uh, if you want to try to go live in California, guess what? It's not Babylon. It's kind of wonderful out here. Uh, I love, I love LA. I, I don't want to be anywhere else then you can do that too. And I try really hard to instill that in the, in the campers every summer. So, so that is vitally important to me to get to do that every year. Wasn't it, uh, was it Randy Newman that wrote that? I love LA. Da, 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 da. And then the ABC television network made a version for the That's promo right. campaign. I mm-hmm. love all the, I love all that television network promo stuff oh, yeah, too. Sure, and sure. and uh, they did a whole, you know, you'll love it on ABC and they did a <laughs> version right. of his I Love LA, That's which right. is kind of cool. You know, the, the repurposing of music. Mm-hmm. Have you had that happen as well where some of your stuff has been repurposed? You know, I, I don't know that it necessarily has been repurposed. I will say I did a, a book trailer for a book called The Amish Girl. And that was really, really different. Have you ever even heard of a book trailer? So it was right. Like, yeah, I mean, it, it was a, a full, I think it was a two minute trailer, just like a movie trailer, but for a novel. For the book. Yeah. yeah. And, and the Amish girl, I've, I've read it. We ended up actually doing the audiobook version of it right here in the studio. Uh, so, so that was really interesting. And the reason I'm bringing it up is the trailer. I used some things that I had written for three or four other projects, but they were so perfect for that particular trailer that it just had to happen, you know, and, and the Amish girl trailer, uh, honestly, I'm really proud of that trailer. Uh, it's, it's, it's really very cool. Isn't that great? <laughs> isn't, I, isn't that great? <laughs> visually it's amazing. You know, I don't, the, the guys that did the visuals are like, Whoa, they did it maybe, really you nice. wanna, maybe you want to buy the book, you know, <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> hey, look, we've got this shot too. This is cool. Oh, Talk yeah, about sure. drum pedals, huh? <laughs> wow! Yeah, the, that was a, that was a moment when I was collecting a few pedals to to have uh, to use for different things. So I still have all of those, by the way. These, in fact, one sitting on my foot right now, but they're all dialed in just a little differently for different feels and sounds. Wow! Yeah. You mentioned uh, you know s- folks in your life that are quite special. Mm-hmm. Hey. hey. <laughs> my lady and my dog. <laughs> yeah, that's my wife, Natalie, and our dog, Lola, at Christmas this past year, obviously. <laughs> Lola. What a great yeah. name, huh? Yeah, thank you. She's she's our little bud, for sure. For and sure. then, of course, you know, um, there's that person who allowed you to pound on the pots and pans. Yeah, that'd be my mom. <laughs> Absolutely. That's that's Carolyn. That's my mama. She's the sweetest thing in the world. She really Very is. Very proud, she's huh? Just, Oh, I don't know if she still, I still don't know if she understands what I do for a living. <laughs> <laughs> I know that when she comes out here, she always loves it. She She's, does. She loves LA and she, she likes to be out here and see how we live. She's in still LA. in Mississippi. Yeah. She, yeah. Yeah. Back home. And yeah. Yeah. She's just, as long as you're healthy and you're eating well, she's happy. <laughs> Something she's like happy, that. That's right. right. Yeah, That's right. You make sure you eat and sleep. She's good. She is. <clears throat> and of course, Lola. Have There's you written a, a song about Lola yet? Ooh, well, you know, Lola was mentioned in a few songs that I didn't write, you know, L O L A Lola. La 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 Lola. You know, so we've got that and and her name was Lola. She was a showgirl. So, so so we've got a few of those already. 
but maybe I need to write my own. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Cool oh, stuff. Yeah. Really? So you're enjoying the ride. This is something that, yeah. uh, yeah. you know, it's, has it, if you were to look back and talk to the 15 year old buddy Gibbons, <laughs> what would he say to, what would the buddy of today say to the buddy of then? Don't move out of fear. Move to LA sooner. That He would have certainly said that. Move to LA sooner um, because I've been really at home here. Mona says, sweet looking mom. Great picture of her too. <laughs> AJM Jazz, you're speaking to one of the finest musicians I've ever worked with from AJM Jazz. Thanks for joining us, AJM Jazz. Welcome to the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. Very cool to have you here. Thanks for those kind words. Indeed. Um, I'm not wonderful. sure who AJM Jazz is. Who is AJM Jazz? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know the screen name. I'm We're trying, trying to figure it yeah. Well, yeah, we're trying to figure uh, you're speaking one of the finest I've ever worked with AJM Jazz. Oh, let us know who that is. Yeah, yeah let us I, I want to know who that is. I'm sure I know who it is immediately. It's just I don't know the screen name. The screen name, exactly. Yeah, right, right. Um, Jen, uh, Jen goes, Holy grail of drum pedals. Wow. <laughs> yeah. She plays uh, as well. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, those uh, are Gina those... wants to know opinion on the Tusk recording. Brilliant. Oh my gosh, how great is that recording? Everything yeah. about it, the sonics of it are yeah. unbelievable. And of course, the songs, uh, I mean, the, t the title track is, of course, unbelievable. But yeah. the, the, the whole record is just brilliant. Uh, Kathleen in New York says, buddy, have you met any of your favorite mm -hmm. musicians? Who would you like to meet or play with? Yeah. Yeah, we kind of covered the last half of that a minute ago. But, but Rick Springfield, Toby goes, oh, no, yes. <laughs> right. I've met quite a few of my favorite musicians. I've even worked with quite a few of them. Um, Abe Laboriel Sr. was a, a hero of mine. He's a he's a bass player, and I got a call from him one day. Uh, he I, hello. He goes, hey buddy, this is Abe Laboriel. I went, <laughs> hung up the phone on him twice. Did uh, you? Yeah. Because you I thought did. it was a crank call. That, I totally that was real. Did. I totally did. Uh, but, but he finally convinced twice, me. Twice, even the second twice. time. <laughs> yeah. Same day or within moments, I hung up and he called right back. You know, it took so he did a third one. He did. And and I finally he said, hey, wait, before you hang up, it's me. It, it was kind of <laughs> like that. Yeah. So I got to play with him on a couple of shows, which was just unbelievable. If you don't know who Abe is, take a look at his Google, Google him because you're going to see the people he's played with. He's part uh, of the soundtrack of your life. Let me assure legend, you. Legend. Yeah. Legendary bass player beyond belief. So that was unreal. And, you know, the truth is I have a, a, a trio, a power trio, Mick Mahan, who's the bass player with Pat Benatar and Dave Amato, who's the lead guitar player in REO Speedwagon. Oh, yeah. And I, we, we are a power trio that write a lot of these songs together. We record a lot of these songs either here or out at Mick's place. So I, even just getting to, to play with those guys, you know, they were, I listened to them when I was a kid, you know, and heard yes. them as I was growing up. And here I am working with them on the regular, which is amazing. H.A.M. Oh. Jazz is National Thunder. Oh, hey, Tony. How are you? That's, That's Tony. Tony. <laughs> <laughs> so Nashville Thunder, was that a group or? Nashville Thunder was Tony and I. He's a, he's a ridiculous, ridiculous musician. Uh, he worked, he worked uh, as a bass player quite a lot. And he and I hired ourselves out around Nashville as the rhythm section called Nashville, Nashville Thunder. Thunder. That's yeah. Cool. So, and, and we both had a very different take on playing than the typical Nashville style. We weren't really, we didn't fit. He's from upstate New York. In fact, he's, oh, he from, is, yeah. he's from Rochester. Yeah. Rochester. Yeah. yeah. No, that is upstate. That it is. is upstate. Yeah. So he's yeah. from there and I was from Mississippi and we, we clicked when we got together on stage. Uh, we, we actually were the last call of the singer songwriter. He really didn't like either one of us, but we liked each other tremendously and uh, we ended up working together for the next five or six or seven years and became very close friends. That's really cool. Yeah. Rochester is upstate. I know that <laughs> because I uh, grew up out east on Long Island. And it's funny because people that are on Long Island, they would say when they're going anywhere north of New York City, they're going upstate. And that could be White Plains, that could be Mamaroneck, that could, right. And then you talk to somebody that's in Rochester, and they're like, "No, no, no, uh, that's not upstate. <laughs> <laughs> Rye, New York, is not upstate. White Plains isn't upstate. Rochester, yeah. that's upstate. That's upstate. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Snow country. Yeah. So, it is. Uh, 
do you get a chance to travel with this work? And will you be doing any traveling? You know, hope to do any coming up? I have already booked the drum camps for this summer. So I am going to go do that. Um, I, I, the show that I do, we're talking about taking it on the road in the fall uh, and, and doing some interview segments around the country. Maybe I'll come see you. Um, yeah. That, that'd be really fun, actually. East Coast. Yes. Yeah. But hitting the East Coast, maybe going to Drummers Collective and seeing some of the guys there, hitting Nashville and seeing my friends there. Uh, so we're, we're talking about doing some of that. Uh, as far as work is concerned, I'm pretty well here. You yeah. know, if I, if I were to get a call to do a tour again, yeah. um, as long as it's a good tour, I, I would do it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of itching to do that again. It's been a long time since I've done that. The touring, yeah, and getting yeah. out there. And uh, yeah. I think it was the drummer uh, at the time of this show, the drummer from Foo Fighters passed away huh? while they yeah. were on tour. Yeah, Taylor Hawkins last night. It's, Do you ever I, get a chance to see him do his oh, thing? Sure, or, or... sure. We, we knew each other on a cursory level, meaning you know we knew each other to say hi. It's not like we were best friends or anything. Um, uh, and he was just a bundle of kinetic energy, man. Wow. Uh, a really, really tremendous human being. So uh, it was a shock when he when he passed away. I know I have a very close friend, Kelly King, who was very close with Taylor. And, and I know he's just been rocked all day. From yeah. Him. Yeah. It was sudden. They were mm -hmm. I think they, they announced it like an hour before they were going to hit the stage, too, that's and everything. Right. And mm -hmm. that's why one of the things is life is precious. Life is short. Mm -hmm. Life uh you know, is to be lived. And we talk about that on the show. And, you know, we talk about empathy and kindness and, and bringing people together. I love inspiring people, empowering people through all of my work mm -hmm. in television sure. and radio. And I, I like to do that even off television radio, just to find ways to link us all together. Music Absolutely. does that on so yes. many different levels. Yes. It's, it's a great healer. Yes. It's a, a universal language. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it, There's so much that comes through music that, you know, the emotion and mm -hmm. that is really, really crucial. I keep saying, it's funny. I keep saying as far as heaven, mm -hmm. I keep saying, I hope there's music. <laughs> I hope there's music. And, and I don't yeah. smoke, right. but for me, Music is my cigarette. Sure. Yeah. 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 It does yeah. that for me. I would, I would say that music is probably heaven come down. That's just, I like that. That's a good, that's a good way to put it. You know, it is yeah. when you think about it, it really, really is. Yeah. That is cool. It, that is, all the things you said about it are very true. It puts, it transports us. Yeah. And, and you know, if I'm feeling sad, I don't, I, I want a sad song to make me really feel the emotion of it. If, if I'm feeling happy, I want a happy song. Uh, and it, it does transport the emotion. It transports, it, it transports and transcends cultures and ages and, and uh, skin color doesn't matter. And politics don't matter. Uh, if we all love Metallica, we all love Metallica. It doesn't matter about anything else. And uh, I, that's, incredibly important and i think something that's kind of missing is that shared experience and that shared love of music these yeah days. the communal experiences yeah. uh have been dwarfed a little bit but hopefully they will come back just like uh, gina says music is my joy exactly music heals the soul from jen in pennsylvania exactly. toby says music is the drug of choice <laughs> yes you know who agrees with all this too um Mr. George Burns. <laughs> <laughs> he 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 did a soft shoe every once in a while he and did. Gracie and uh, <laughs> that's the reaction. He he's part of our show. He was I uh, love he, it. Yeah, he's got a cigar and everything. <laughs> that's the guy that smoked cigars and lived to a hundred. <laughs> no I tell kidding. you. God no was kidding. on his side. I think it was ever since he played God in the movie. Oh right. God, that's that's what uh, did it for him. But uh, this fantastic. was a a family heirloom. My aunt collected dolls. And when he turned a hundred, she ran out and got this collectible. So it got passed down to me and uh, he pops in in the end and, you know, he's always looking and he's sort of like an associate producer. So he of said, course. you knocked it out of the park today. He loved, <laughs> well, it. Thank you. He loved learning about what you do and uh, your openness and authenticity and your raw thank talent. You. So he had a, he had a blast, George Burns. Excellent, George Burns. Thank you. Say good night, Gracie. <laughs> good night, good night Gracie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this was a blast, my friend. This was truly, truly 
Fantastic. And I'm glad we got a chance to do this and uh, really, really awesome. And uh, I hope the show met, you know, whatever expectations you had and you enjoyed the time with me as much as I have with you, buddy. Absolutely. It's been a blast. I've really enjoyed it. It's uh, I don't get to talk about my stuff very often and uh, I always feel sort of awkward doing it. So you've made it very comfortable and fun. So thank you for that. When I was listening to the bio that you were reading at the top, I was like, who is he talking about? That's me. That's me. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, uh, spread the word about our show. We really would appreciate that. As we know, it takes a village and, uh, you know, we try to do warm conversations and we, there's no script, there's no teleprompter. I just, you know, I I work in that world. So when we do this series, it's just, Mm -hmm. let's uh, connect, shoot the breeze, let it roll. Uh, We chatted for an hour and a half. Would you believe that? I mean, it doesn't feel like that, right? Not at all. Not even a little bit. uh, and if they want to catch some of your material, website, things of that nature. Yeah, buddygibbons.com. There's quite a few examples on there. And, and uh, there's uh, merchandise on there, too. If you, want to, if you want to take a look at some fun stuff there, you can see photos. And, and, just, and you can reach me through that as well. So feel free. Awesome. And, of course, social media. I'm all over it. So yeah. Facebook, et cetera. In all fact, I got, a friend, I got a friend request from this Gem Masters guy today. Did you really? I did. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the question is, did you answer it? <laughs> I did. I'm not going to say how I answered it, but I answered it. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Uh, like yeah. you say, it takes a village, doesn't it? It does. It really does. Uh, oh, Marty Thompson's here. Marty is, that's, I'm glad he got in here under the wire. Marty mm-hmm. is the Aussie crooner he's originally from australia okay. lives in nashville okay uh, worked has worked with some of the the best in the industry sure. uh he's um worked with uh the count basie orchestra oh, nice. and so much more says yeah. buddy some of my all-time favorite drummers buddy rich my mentor warren daly from australia mm. uh who are your favorite influencers and do you like swing jazz big band style too and marty thanks you just did a super sticker super that's super chat thanks marty i really appreciate that you're the best supporting the show so uh do you like swing jazz big band style at all too without a doubt i I think it's fantastic um i've i've had some interesting gigs playing it uh it's not something i grew up with but but it's something i kind of dug into later in my life so that I, i really had a different understanding of it and i'm actually taking drum lessons again uh, part of it is so that I can become even more well versed in that particular style because it's something I listen to and really respect a lot. So, so Buddy Rich, of course, being the king of that. But I also love the way Art Blakey approached stuff of that nature, and of course Gene Krupa. Uh, if I was going to pick somebody from that sort of style, and I realize that these are sort of not exactly big band swing, but from the whole that whole era, Krupa jumps right out at me. Uh, I really love that stuff. My more current influences, top of the list is Vinny Kaliuta, uh, and he plays everything brilliantly. He, he's probably the best drummer on the planet these days. Uh, in fact, I, I'm going to just go ahead and say that he is. But he, of course, plays big band stuff. Just he, He's incredibly well-versed. And that's ultimately what I'm trying to do myself, is get my vocabulary together and, and be able to speak in longer phrases musically. So absolutely, I'm a huge fan of that. And, sp- and also Steve Smith's playing in the big band style. Now I realize he's more known for Journey, but the stuff he does in the big band style is every bit as good as anything he ever did in the pop style. Mm. The big, yeah. Great names you just uh, listed, huh? Yeah, for sure. Really cool. Yeah. And we pulled up this uh, background to sort of blend in with what your theme is, huh? So nice. it's, uh, like I say, it takes a village. <laughs> it does, it does. Really, really cool. And uh, Mona in uh, New Orleans says, what a pleasure meeting you, buddy. Thank you for entertaining us tonight. Love oh. that purple background. Thank you, Mona. I appreciate it. Jen that. in uh, Pennsylvania. Thank you, Jim and Buddy. You're very welcome. Yes, you are. And uh, Buddy is our new buddy. And Maureen mm-hmm. says, uh, thanks for the entertainment, Buddy. Keep uh, being awesome. Thank you so She's much. She's in Arizona. Kathleen in New York City. Thank you, buddy. You're so talented. Thanks for being here and take care. Gina says, you. y'all stay safe. 
Good could do stuff. It. Thanks for the great comments. Yeah. This really was amazing, my friend. Uh, we won't keep you Thank longer because you. you have family visiting, I do, right? I do. Yeah, you absolutely. Family visiting, and they probably haven't eaten yet because it's earlier there. It's eight <laughs> it thirty here, but for you guys, it's, it's getting around that dinner time. It's huh? about five thirty now. Yeah, so I'm I'm actually going to cook tonight. So after oh. I see, this is what it's like being the invisible rock star. As soon as I get through being the on screen star, I go do dishes and cook. That's the way <laughs> life really is behind the scenes, isn't it? it? Is, isn't what it? so now this is a foodie crowd. What yeah. is Buddy going to make tonight for dinner? Tonight is chicken kebabs with peppers and onions and pineapple with a little bit of kielbasa sausage. And I'm gonna do a hummus, probably a garlic hummus with some rice as well. Let's start the car. We're going to Buddy's. <laughs> how, how we get there from the East Coast. <laughs> I'm, a, a, I'm it's got on a plane. Red I'm, eye. I'm a foodie too, and I love yeah, to cook. It's one too. of my favorite things. It's it's another creative outlet outside yes. of music. So I go in and I, I throw things together, and I hit about half the time. <laughs> <laughs> do you do the southern uh, stuff too? Uh, my southern my my southern vice is fried chicken. Yeah. And, and I make my fried chicken with 12 herbs and spices. So I'm one better than the Colonel. Ah, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're, I do. you're afraid the ghost of the Colonel's going to come in <laughs> behind the set and just come on over Something and grab like by that. the neck, by the chicken neck. <laughs> uh, seriously. I'll, see, I'll tell you. See, if I didn't ask, Gina did. What are you cooking? See, <laughs> they want to know. See. Yeah. I, I will tell you my, uh, my, my friends that come taste my fried chicken all kind of say it's some of the best stuff they've ever had. So I'm going to roll with that. Toby's going to come over, throw a few uh, on for her as well. You're just carpool, down the road. Carpool to buddies. Woo! Yum. <laughs> and uh, how gourmet. I'm very impressed. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Nashville Thunder says, Excellent. great show, Jim. Subscribe. Keep up the great, great work. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Welcome to the uh, – JMS family. You know, some of the viewers already said you're now a Jim Masters show lovity. So you're one yes. of the loveties, my friend. I'll take that any day. Jane is watching in Sweden where it's 1.34 a.m. My goodness. She's here all the time. That's real lovity, isn't it? It is. My goodness. <laughs> that is real lovity. Yeah. You're the best. Thanks for spending uh, all this time with us, my friend. Let's my definitely pleasure. stay connected. By Keep all means. Keep you posted on everything that you're doing. Really, really cool having you here. Thank you. Um, Chicken with spices and flour in a paper bag, then fry. Ooh. Okay, Gina. we can talk. We can talk. I was going to say, that sounds that sounds pretty, <laughs> pretty good. Now we're getting hungry. Buddy is now a lovety. Jane has made it official. There's Excellent. There's uh, Grammys and Tonys and Oscars and Emmys and Tellys and Peabody's. But when you get designated a lovety on the Gym Masters show live, mm -hmm. how does it make you feel? Are your feet tingling? Well, of course. How could they not be? I'm barely going to be able to make it up the steps to That's collect my award. <laughs> That's right. You uh, you take care, my friend. Thanks for all Thanks the time. For Real pleasure. Spread the word, and uh, we'll have you back. As we always say, we'll keep the porch light on for you. Okay, Thank buddy? You. Thank you so much, Jim. I appreciate it. It's been really fun. Absolutely. You're the best. You take care now. You as well. Thanks, everybody. All right. Bye-bye right. now. Bye-bye. Buddy Gibbons, acclaimed composer, musician, producer, and drummer, right here, gracing our presence for all of you on a Saturday night, too. At least that's the time it is here live. We really enjoyed having him here and having all of you here, too. And uh, really, really cool. You can check him out online as well and everything that he's doing. Um, really cool stuff. The Invisible rock star, not so invisible today on the Jim Masters Show live. Again, uh, you've heard his music on so many television shows from CBS to uh, Fox Sports to Netflix and Hulu and Univision and on and on and on. Prolific as the word. And he really loves what he does. And uh, as you can see, he has a good time and uh, great, great, great conversation. Uh, you guys are still talking about food. So let's... <laughs> I'm starving now. I think I'm I'm actually very hungry. We really didn't have a full dinner yet. I just had a huge salad, big salad of lettuce with uh, cranberries in it, a little light feta cheese, um, sort of a uh, sweet vidalia honey, uh, sweet vidalia onion, light honey dressing. Uh, what else? We threw some peanuts in there as well, which was really really good. Sliced carrots. And mixed it all up into a big salad. Had that earlier. It was delicious. 
Buddy's Bloody Good Chicken, Marty says, <laughs> which is really, really cool. Marty, thanks again for that uh, super chat. You are the absolute best. Pizza time for Toby. Yes, Toby, enjoy. We love you. Sending love out to Encino. Wow, we from Toby. And um, Buddy is so cool. I like him. Absolutely. Toodles from Gina. What a nice guy from Merlin. Thanks, Jim. It was a great show tonight, Buddy. It was very entertaining. Love your new look. You look great tonight, as always. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I know I my look changes with the wind <laughs> uh, because of everything that I do with the different roles and the different shows that I host. So my look changes, the style changes, the wardrobe changes because of you know some of the shows I do is like a news program. Some of it's entertainment. Some of it's this, that. So everything changes. But with the Jim Masters show, I can do whatever I want because the only one I have to answer to is Jim Masters. <laughs> but Mona, thanks. I appreciate that uh, very, very much. And uh, yes, um, cool stuff. You guys are the best. I'm looking at all these comments coming in here. Always great when we connect. You know, it's always great when we connect. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe to our YouTube channel, that's the channel where we present all of these shows in this incredible series of over 600 plus episodes. Click that red button you see there. It's on our YouTube channel. Click subscribe. We'd love that. There's no cost for that. And uh, make sure you click the notification bell so you never miss any of our episodes. You'll be alerted on every episode we have. And also give this episode a like. There's a little thumbs up icon on every episode. Click that. That gives us a little like. And leave a comment on the YouTube channel as well. When you do that, it's very helpful. I'm very responsive. We try to respond as quick as we can. Sometimes things get a little busy because of my professional work in TV and radio, but we try to respond uh, as quickly as we can. And thank you. Many of you have been commenting uh, with kind words on our YouTube channel, Jim Master City, under all the episodes. And when you do that, YouTube sees that and they take the episode and they blast it out. Their algorithm picks it up and blasts it out to more. So uh, we appreciate those of you who have been leaving kind comments on our show. Um, really, really cool. I want to let you know too, uh, for those of you who are music buffs, well, I have to say, if did you see the episode where the amazing Kreskin, world-renowned mentalist author and TV personality was on our show? There are thousands of people that have been watching this episode and I love it. He's a dear friend. He was on our show this past week. Uh, if you didn't see that episode, it was historic and it was amazing. Also, coming up on Monday, another dear friend. She's a wonderful friend of mine, and we actually worked on a Celtic rock concert special together. Uh, Christine Ullman, who is a longtime vocalist on Saturday Night Live, SNL. Yeah, she's with this Saturday Night, uh, Night Live band, and she's been with the Saturday Night Live band for years. She's also the Beehive Queen. Uh, she was called the Beehive Queen, paying homage as a young girl to one of her. Um, somebody that she always looked up to is Ronnie Spector, and that's where the Beehive Queen came from for Christine Allman. She's a prolific singer-songwriter, and uh, she's going to be with us on Monday live exclusively at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. She is wildly excited about this. So am I. We've been working on this for a while, trying to work around her extremely busy schedule. She's been touring. She's on Saturday Night Live, you know, with the band. So very, very busy person. But to be able to get uh, some time with her on Monday, it's going to be fantastic. Marty says, Jim, I love the musicians you bring on the show. They're in a lot of cases, unsung heroes as they have so many fascinating stories. Looking forward to the monster of a trumpet player, Roger Ingram. That's right. He's coming up as well on our show. We have so many guests. Glenn Scarpelli's coming back. You know, I'm very excited to let you know too. Paul Green is coming. Uh, yes, my buddy, Paul Green, a uh, terrific musician and singer and actor. You guys know him from the Hallmark Channel. He plays, uh, he's played Dr. Um, 
Carson Shepard on When Calls the Heart on Hallmark and a lot of Christmas movies and all kinds of cool things. And we worked together at a uh, very special concert event with our dear mutual friend, Tim Janis, prolific composer, producer, and more. Uh, I've worked with Tim on a lot of projects. He's a dear friend and uh, he does an annual uh, concert special uh, at Carnegie Hall. And I've had the ultimate, and I love uh, the opportunity to MC that's master of ceremonies, host that for uh, Tim and some uh, celebrity after parties and other cool things. And we worked on specials up in Maine, Celtic Heart, and all kinds of things. And I've interviewed him on PBS <clears throat> and he does the American Christmas Carol at Carnegie Hall. And uh, Paul was uh, one of the performers and that's where Paul and I met. I was the master of ceremonies. Paul was a performer and we stayed in touch. So Paul Green is coming on the show uh, April 21st, Thursday, April 21st at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Thank you, Jen Barry. You're looking good, Jim. Love you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And yes, April 21st, Paul Green, my buddy, will be back. This will be his return visit. Double Lovety, his second visit. A lot of these guests, when they come on, they ask, when can I come back? <laughs> and I really appreciate that. That's a beautiful thing to hear. You know, you don't always hear that with a lot of shows. Sometimes they go on shows and they're like, that was awful. I never want to do that thing again. Um, so I really appreciate that, that so many guests want to come back and so many guests have returned, uh, which is great. Glenn Scarpelli is coming back on the show. We're very excited about that. We also have... The Cousins Gib coming on the show. Cousins of the Gibbs. Yes. Barry and Andy and Maurice. And yeah, uh, they are coming on the show soon in April. The Cousins Gib. And we are very excited about that. Uh, they contacted us and wanted to come on the show. And are very excited about that. And and so many more Um Michael Leonard, who is a brilliant actress who played the mom on the Waltons. You know, we have a, if you haven't uh, scrolled back and binge watched some of our previous episodes, they're all on the YouTube channel. Scroll back, look at some of the earlier episodes, over 600 you can peruse. We've had Patrick McEnroe on the show, brilliant, uh, you know, tennis player, as well as tennis teacher, married to Melissa Errico, Broadway star. Brother of John McEnroe, Patrick also uh, is a correspondent for ESPN. He was on our show. I mean, Marion Ross from Happy Days was on our show. The breadth of guests from chefs to comedians to authors to um, musicians and actors, actresses, and people that are just doing beautiful things. That's what we do here. We're not just actors. We're not just musicians. We're not just authors. We're not just you know, any one thing. It's like a traditional old school entertainment lifestyle variety talk show series with a modern vibe and updated feel of, of today. Loved the Bee Gees. Yes. And the Australian Bee Gees. You know, I don't know if I told you this, Marty. I interviewed the Australian Bee Gees numerous times on PBS with their PBS specials. Kind of cool, huh? It is a very, very uh, small world. It really is good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, terrific. Fantastic. Merlin. I love that. Yeah. Paul and I've been working on that for a while and uh, we worked out the, the 21st for Paul Green to join us here on the show. And it's going to be really, really, really cool. And, um, and again, so many guests coming up and, and some of our shows where we go on location and some of the shows where it's just you and I, we do the host chat shows. That's something very special. We do host chat levity shows. So we don't call this an interview show. We call it an entertainment lifestyle variety talk show series because that's what we like to do. And uh, we like to have a lot of variety and we have a, you know, a different sort of concept to uh, every single episode, which is very, very cool. Artist of all sorts. Yes, that's right. All different backgrounds and fields of endeavor and levels of success and celebrity. Celebrity friends, people I've interviewed over the years on television and radio pop on and some others um, as well. Jim, thank you for spending time with us. My pleasure. If uh, you have suggestions for guests, uh, you can always let us know by reaching us at uh, two places, Jim Masters uh, Media at uh, gmail.com or jimmasterstv at gmail.com. 
and uh, you can let us know. And if uh, you would like to sponsor our show, we're also looking for sponsors and uh, those who would like to uh, sort of support the work we're doing here, which is very special. We've created a community of lovity, a community of international viewers and extraordinary conversations, poignant moments and entertainment. You can reach out to us there as well if you know somebody or you would like to uh, sponsor and or sort of endorse what we're doing here. Uh, you can certainly reach us at gymmasterstv at gmail.com or gymmastersmedia at gmail.com. Uh, we are in the midst right now of uh, bringing in sponsorships as well. And of course, when you do the super chat, super emoji, super stickers, that helps us. We appreciate that. And the little thanks heart, you know, underneath all the episodes, there's a little heart. And I didn't know it was there until a couple of you did it and you supported the series by clicking on that heart. It's a, it's a thanks heart. And that you can do 24-7. It doesn't have to be when the show is live. You can do that at any time underneath every episode. That little heart is there, uh, the icon on our YouTube channel. Check that out. And uh, some of you have done that. We really appreciate that as well. You guys are the best. Thanks for being with us. We love you all. Thanks for all the comments, all the passion. All the levity. Thanks for being with us on this episode with our special guest, Buddy Gibbons, joining us from Los Angeles, California. And Lola. <laughs> Lola. That's cool, huh? Mona says, uh, and again, this is for the live audience. I know a lot of you do watch this later on when the show is not live. And we thank you very much. Not everybody can catch the show when it's live. So many of you... Some of you, when you can't catch it live, you send us notes and you say, I apologize. Uh, like you feel bad that you can't be with us live. But as long as you're with us, even if it's in the archives, watching the replays, we love that too. Um, and again, you can find me on all social media, Jim Masters TV on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It's all Jim Masters TV. Our YouTube channel is Jim Masters TV. And our Facebook group we have for this show the Jim Masters Show, Lovety Hall as well. Uh, good night, Jim. Loveties. Hope everyone has a great night. Thank you for tonight. You are very welcome, Mona. We love you there in uh, New Orleans. Good night from Los Angeles. Absolutely, Gina. Gina is a brand new Lovety. She just joined like recently. Uh, she's part of our Lovety squad now, representing LA, and we love her. So thanks for telling us... Uh, you know, that you enjoy our series. Thanks for spreading the word. You know, we're, we're so happy that you're part of our Lovity squad, which is growing, growing, growing. As more people view our series, more people watch, they comment, they feel connected with it. I love that. And that's part of what we're doing. It's not just, you know, idle chat. It's to create a place for you to come to feel good, you know, and have these great conversations and, and connect with one another and and everything that happens from this show. So we don't just upload videos. We don't just interview somebody and then they're gone. It's a whole thing that we've created here that's sometimes tough to put in words. And I'm a wordsmith. It's more feeling, you know, it's more, there's a vibe here that's just really cool. And it's, uh, it's blown me away. Uh, it, ever, it does every time. Uh, there's the outpouring from all of you. Uh, those of you who are, you know, visible right here with these comments like Kathleen in New York City, right back at you. Or those of you who watch privately or you send a private message via email or you send a note uh, on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, uh, we, we thank you for all of that. Have a wonderful rest of your day and night, everyone, sending out those tight, lovely hugs far and wide from Maureen in Arizona, right back at you, Maureen. We will be back uh, again for those that aren't watching live. You're watching this later. Stay right here. Another great episode of the Jib Masters show comes up next, or you can binge watch all the episodes. Those of you who are watching live, we'll be back on Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific with from Saturday Night Live, vocalist extraordinaire, the Beehive Queen, singer songwriter, Christine Ullman. It's going to be a great night with Christine Monday night exclusively here on the Gym Master Show Live. All right, gang. This is the Gym Master Show that you're watching here on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. We thank you so very much. We love you all. 
Uh, keep spreading the word about the series. Share these YouTube episode links on all of your social media. We thank those of you who have been doing that. And uh, wherever you are or watching around the world, be good to one another. Take care of one another. And join us again. I'll keep the porch light on for you, 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 and you right here. I'll be waiting for you. I'll be sitting in this host chair. Maybe I'll get up to eat and sleep, but I'll be sitting in this host chair the next time you tune in, waiting for you. We love you all. Be well. Take care. And thanks for joining us on this episode of the Jim Masters Show Live. And Marty, we got to get Marty in here. Jim, thanks again for all the uh, noobs hit the subscribe button. I love that noobs. <laughs> noobs hit the subscribe button. You won't disappoint. Thank you very much. Noobs. I like that. <laughs> Blokes and noobs. I love all those words. Thanks, Marty. You're the best. Hello to you and Babette there in Nashville. Good stuff. What a great group of people we have here that uh, watch uh, our series and support what we're doing. Touches my heart all the time. Really, really does. And you know that I speak authentically from the heart. So it's the real deal. You guys be well. We'll see you on the next episode of the Gym Masters Show. Be well, take care, love one another, and cheers.